webinar on open source databases. We'll be uploading a copy of the presentation of SlideShare tomorrow morning. All participants will be sent a follow-up email that includes a link to allow you to download a copy. This month we're going to discuss the rising interest in open source relational databases. We'll take a look at the causal factors driving their increasing popularity, how the cloud is accelerating that growth, evaluate some of the more popular open source offerings, and we're going to end the discussion on recommended strategies and best practices. By default, GoToWebinar mutes all participants except the speaker, and that's a good thing because it reduces the chance of background noise affecting the presentation. We're going to hold questions until the end. There's a button on the GoToWebinar panel that will allow you to type your questions in. Kelly, who is the webinar's organizer, will bundle them up and we'll discuss them at the end. We want to be respectful of your time. We know that many of you will have meetings right after this one. I've timed the presentation to allow a Q&A at the end, so if we're in danger of running over, I can always respond to many questions by email. Our intent is to have these RDX Insights presentations monthly. Next month's presentation will be on cloud systems hidden impact on IT support organizations. It was a very popular webinar that we first presented in January, so we've decided to offer it again. The cloud isn't a product, it's uh, an architecture. An architecture that requires changes to organizational roles and responsibilities, staff training, policies and procedures, application design, change management, security, auditing, in-house support tool sets. Next month's webinar provides our experiences with the cloud and its hidden impact on IT support. September's presentation will be on PCI DSS compliance, which stands for Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards. RDX has maintained a PCI attestation for about six years now. This will be a joint presentation with our auditing firm, Megaplan IT. Megaplan IT is a PCI qualified security assessor. They have an excellent reputation for being very thorough. We're going to talk about the benefits of becoming PCI compliant. More importantly, why the PCI DSS framework of controls it can be applied to general security, not just storing and processing credit cards. You can apply that PCI framework to your shop regardless if you store or process credit card swipe information. The policies are broad and all-encompassing, so they can really be used by any organization to improve the security of their compute environment. In addition, you can begin by using the framework as a set of internal standards of self-audit. You can then move forward by engaging a third-party audit if you want to, to review your control procedures. You can download the PCI DSS control objectives from the website. It's well worth the time and expense because it allows you to rest a bit easier Right? If you get that third-party uh, firm involved, that you have an independent auditing firm certified in a very stringent set of controls evaluating the security of your environment. I also distribute a monthly newsletter you might be interested in. It covers interesting technical topics that we think would benefit our readers both personally and professionally. You don't have to be a customer to receive it. This month's newsletter includes a link to an RDX video demo of Microsoft Power BI, Articles on SQL Server 2017 new features, Amazon AWS data migration services, and Google Cloud SQL support for Postgres SQL, which we're going to also discuss today. Each newsletter also has helpful hints on how to maximize your relationship with RDX. If you'd like to be added to that distribution list, let me know. I'll display my email on the last slide of this presentation. You can always add me as your LinkedIn buddy. I write articles and slideshow presentations on a lot of different wide-ranging technical topics. So let's get started with today's presentation. I'm not showing this slide as a cheap advertisement for our services. What I'm attempting to show is that RDX has experienced monitor, monitoring and administering a wide range of relational database products. We support thousands of SQL Server, Oracle, and DB2 environments. In addition, we also support open source relational databases. We support most major distributions and forks of both MySQL and PostgreSQL. We have customers that either use all open source or all commercial. Other customers deploy a mix of open source and commercial products. One of the benefits that RDX can provide to all shops is our wide range of expertise. It's just the nature of our business. We support close to I think, somewhere around 500 customers now, so we aren't constrained by any one organization's tech stack. We're required to administer virtually every database feature you can think of for every product we support. We work with dozens and dozens of different tech stack combinations. 
We also have to be database agnostic. We'll let you know what the strengths and weaknesses are for all the products we support. We're also willing to tell you which ones are the most appropriate for a given use case, but we don't have a preference toward any database vendor. Each database ecosystem, Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, Relational, NoSQL, Cloud on-premises, they all have benefits and weaknesses. Because we support virtually everything, we know what works and what doesn't. During the course of this presentation, we're going to focus on open source relational products, as well as several database platform as a service, DBPAS offerings. We're not going to dive into infrastructure as a service offerings. They're just really servers in the cloud. IAS allows you to install your software of choice, open source, commercial, NoSQL, relational, Unix, Windows, whatever. Now, that's a different comparative analysis and presentation. Open source database management systems provide consumers with the benefit of little to no upfront licensing costs. The database software is distributed under an open source licensing model that often varies in restrictions according to product and vendor. When compared to the commercial product competitors, open source offerings were historically characterized as niche alternatives with limited features, functionality, and vendor support. As a result, shops often shied away from open source offerings that weren't commercially supported. There was no stable, mature vendor that they could rely upon for product support patches and upgrades. They felt uncomfortable implementing critical or mission-critical applications that were crowd or public supported. As we'll find out in a couple of minutes, over the last five to ten years, a new class of service providers have stepped in to provide 24-7 support for a growing number of open source database products that include PostgreSQL, MySQL, and its derivatives, MariahDB and Pocona, MongoDB and Cassandra for NoSQL. In addition, other vendors are leveraging the inherent benefits of cloud-based architectures to offer open source database platform as a service, DBPAS environments. You have traditional open source vendors like EDB, Pocona, Oracle, the cloud heavyweights, Amazon and Google, all offering open source cloud-based products. You also have vendors like ClearDB and Elephant SQL, marketing multi-cloud DBPAS offerings. Their model allows you to pick your cloud architecture of choice, Amazon, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and create your own open source database on that architecture using their interface. They then leverage that selected architecture to automate backups, provide replication, geo data redundancy. This growth in open source vendors, database features, administrative tools, and available DBA skills combined with the traditionally high cost of commercial database product source code, the commercial vendors' complex and restrictive licensing agreements, and overly aggressive, sometimes described as predatory, licensing auditing practices are all combined to make open source products increasingly attractive alternatives to their commercial counterparts. In addition to the product offerings themselves, there's also a wide range of pricing alternatives. It's important to note that open source doesn't always mean the product is totally free from upfront licensing and or ongoing maintenance costs. Many of the open source database uh, vendors provide base functionality in the free open source offerings that they leverage, and a higher level of features in versions that have upfront purchase costs or require subscription-based support contracts. The cloud DBPS versions of open source products charge customers a rental fee for the use of their architecture and their DB software. The options range from zero cost, 100% community supported database environments to a myriad of 24-7 support options. You have vendors like ClearDB guaranteeing that at least one of your DB masters is going to be available 100% of the time. You can rely upon the industry DB heavyweights like Oracle and Amazon provide support. In addition, you have other open source vendors that have strong reputations for support, which include Percona and EDB. Many of these vendor offerings differ greatly in many areas. This is a very competitive market arena. All the commercial open source product vendors are forced to differentiate themselves from their competitors by adding advanced features and support services. All the core open source products, of course, have a standard set of features, but when we begin digging into the individual offerings, 
we quickly realized that there are dozens and dozens of add-on features and service packages available. We aren't just evaluating products anymore, like PostgreSQL versus MySQL, uh, MariaDB versus SQLite. We're now required to compare architectures, cloud versus on-premises, hybrids, multi-cloud, and 24-7 support options that range from community provided to industry heavyweight service contracts. The intent of this presentation is to cover open source relational products. If you're interested in NoSQL, I've provided links to a previous RDX Insight Series presentation that focused on NoSQL offerings. You can view the presentation on RDX's YouTube channel. You can download a copy of the PowerPoint slides from SlideShare. The presentation provides a high-level overview of NoSQL, followed by a deeper dive into MongoDB, Cassandra, Redis, and Neo4j what they are, how you use them. If you really want to understand these NoSQL offerings and what types of apps they're best suited for, this would be a good presentation for you to view and download. And you'll be getting an email that includes a link to this presentation, and you can just click on that link if you want to view um, the NoSQL presentation on RDX's YouTube channel and download the slides from SlideShare. The DB Engine's websites, and I put the URL on the lower right side of the screen here, it ranks the popularity of open source and commercial database management systems. The criteria used to rank the databases includes measuring the number of references for the product on industry websites, Google searches, and job postings, as well as the number of mentions on professional and social networks. They have a page on their website that describes all the sources they use to generate their popularity rankings. It's really robust. They collect data from a lot of different sources. In addition to ranking individual database products, DB Engine allows visitors to compare products by how they store their data. Graph, relational, document, wide column, key value. The website also provides options to compare relational to NoSQL, commercial to open source. So let's take a look at a comparison of open source versus commercial popularity trends. If you look at the trend lines, you can see the web popularity of open source databases probably going to match their commercial counterparts sometime in 2018. There was a noticeable uptick beginning in 2013 for open source and a corresponding reduction for commercial. We see that both trends are beginning to level off to a point where any future variations probably be small incremental changes. But we also know that we need to include the dramatic increase of interest in NoSQL open source into this analysis. In an upcoming slide, we're going to dig a little more deeply into that comparison. Here are the top five commercial and open source DBMS products. We have the traditional industry commercial heavyweights, of course, Oracle and Microsoft. We need to look at not only their ranking, but their score we can see a fairly dramatic drop in the popularity score when we compare the number two ranked vendor Microsoft to the number three ranked vendor DB2. We can then see the top five open source systems. Look at the score for MySQL. It compares very favorably to Oracle and it exceeds SQL Server in popularity. We then see another significant drop when we compare MySQL to PostgreSQL followed by our NoSQL vendors, MongoDB, Cassandra, Redis. We're combining both commercial and open source rankings on this slide. We see Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB all in the top five. What's more important is to analyze the ranking changes. On the left side of this panel, we see that PostgreSQL moved up in the rankings at MongoDB's expense. Take a look at the ranking score changes on the right side of the screen. We can see that Oracle is experiencing some pretty significant score reductions with a 100-point drop in one year, followed by MySQL, which experienced a 30-point drop. The scores also show that SQL Server is on the rise for commercial and PostgreSQL for open source. The NoSQL product scores are mixed, with MongoDB and Redis showing small increases and Cassandra's score decreasing. When we look at relational versus NoSQL models, it's obvious that relational products command the bulk of the IT community's interest. 
This doesn't bode well with all the industry pundits that hopped on the NoSQL bandwagon, stating that NoSQL will replace relational as the database management system of choice. One of the benefits of the web is it keeps a running history of everything. If you go back to 2012-2013, you'll see predictions stating that NoSQL will be the death of relational database management systems, that Cassandra would mount a significant threat to Oracle, and that shops wouldn't be able to compete if they didn't use a given NoSQL database. Well, we can see that 80% of the, um, the popularity uh, is, continues to be relational. When we review the growth trends of the different DBMS storage models, we see that the relational models trend line, which I gave at the bottom, it really doesn't decrease or increase. It remains fairly constant at that 80%. But as we learned in our last slide, um, it does command 80% of the total interest in all rank storage models. The graph shows that many of the NoSQL models are experiencing fairly significant increases in interest in the IT community. But when we analyze the numeric rankings, the NoSQL products lag far behind the relational competitors. We don't see that relational red line with a significant drop. The great equalizer for the database product market arena is not NoSQL, it's the cloud. The greatest challenge to the traditional players is Amazon and other DBPAS cloud offerings that we're going to be looking into in a few minutes. So we're going to end up with a, our discussion on NoSQL so we can get back to relational. What's the future hold for NoSQL versus relational? We're all aware that the vendor with the best technology doesn't always win the battle for market share or even survive as a viable competitor for that matter. This especially rings true when those vendors are up against offerings provided by much larger and more entrenched competitors. NoSQL offerings are facing some of the IT industry's fiercest, most knowledgeable competitors, Oracle, IBM, Microsoft. We know that these relational industry heavyweights are attempting to co-opt the NoSQL vendor storage models. They use the term multi-model, which really means I'm going to take your storage technology, stick it in my product, and I'm going to put you out of business. Oracle and Microsoft both improving support for NoSQL JSON. It's targeting MongoDB and CouchDB. Oracle and Microsoft both improving their in-memory databases, targeting Redis. Microsoft recently availing a graph offering, targeting Neo4j. NoSQL vendors that use technologies that are easily integrated into a competitor's product are going to be the first to be consumed. Cassandra has a fairly complex processing architecture be more of a challenge for an industry heavyweight to incorporate Cassandra in the product. These smaller vendors will be required to constantly innovate and integrate new features that differentiate their products from their larger competitors. In order to increase market share, the NoSQL vendors will be driven to add relational-like functionality that allows them to be more widely adopted. There are several NoSQL vendors that are already adding relational-like functionality. They support acid transactions, referential integrity, joins. The end result is that the lines of distinction between relational and NoSQL systems will become increasingly blurred. Smaller NoSQL offerings, they're going to remain as viable alternatives, not because of the superiority of their architecture and feature sets. The reason that they're going to stick around is because their offering consists of a unique storage model that is also open source. And the key is open source, a combination which allows them to be viewed as attractive, cost-effective alternatives to commercial products. DICE provides an online utility that allows you to analyze job postings. It's a pretty popular with placement firms and tech body shops they use it, the tool to evaluate the current job skills that are in the most demand. I have a link to the tool that you can use at the bottom of this graphic. The analysis tool allows you to select one or more job titles and compare them with the heat ranking. There are a couple of visualizations you can choose from, but I prefer to use the Beehive. That's what I'm displaying, the Beehive, as I think it provides a very clear picture of what we're trying to convey. The higher up we are on the Beehive, the more postings there are. I picked a couple of additional non-relational technologies that could do Cassandra, MongoDB, to see how they compare the relational offerings. So if we look at the very top, we see that right now PostgreSQL and Cassandra are hot, followed by MongoDB, SQL Server, SQLite, and Oracle bringing up the rear. 
Let's move on to the products. It's important to understand that this presentation only highlights a subset of the features each product provides. It's well beyond the scope of this presentation to do a deep dive into each individual product. I'm just attempting to show features that are readily understood and viewed as beneficial to a wide range of users. In addition, this present, uh, presentation isn't a product shootout. It's a high-level overview of open source relational database products. We learned that PostgreSQL is rising in popularity, and it's a pretty hot job right now on DICE. Increasing popularity always has a snowball effect. Vendors see a growing interest in a given product, and they want to leverage its popularity to their benefits. You see tool vendors making add-on products, third-party apps, adding PostgreSQL to the list of supported database data stores, new cloud offerings. My personal prediction is that we are at the beginning stages of a sustained growth pattern for PostgreSQL. But we must also be aware that the cloud is going to have a significant impact on all DBMS products' growth rates. We know that the larger vendors, Oracle, Microsoft, and Amazon, are aggressively adding features to their cloud environments and they're reducing their rental costs. They want to be known as the leading DBMS cloud provider of choice. In last year's Open World Keynote presentation, Larry Allison pretty much declared all-out war against everything Amazon. This market arena will only become more and more competitive. Will this ever-increasing competition lead to commercial DBMS offerings rental charges being reduced to a point to where open source products lose their low-cost advantages? But when we look at the features provided by PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariahDB, we see that they no longer need to rely upon cost as their biggest driver for adoption. They're now able to compete with the larger commercial competitors head-to-head -head in many key feature areas. We, all, we do know that the traditional commercial RDMS competitors have got huge R&D budgets, but they're now being faced with open source offerings that have large, vibrant development communities. You combine this with a group of very nimble, very smart, and very aggressive competitors like Amazon, Google, EDB, Percona, ClearDB, Elephant SQL, and the competitive playing field becomes much more level. EDB provides a broad set of products, tools, and services that focus on improving the PostgreSQL open source engine. The EDB Postgres platform is an enterprise class database management system based on PostgreSQL. The vendor states that it begins with the base product and adds additional tool sets, features, and functionality in five key areas. Security, performance, database administration, developer features, and my personal favorite, Oracle database compatibility. One of the common themes that we're going to see in all these commercial offerings that use an open source DBMS as their foundation is the additional bells and whistles they add in the base product. Well, their goal, of course, is to differentiate their offering from other open source products as well as the industry heavyweights. I'm a big fan of EDB. The vendor's done an excellent job of adding tool sets and features to an open source product to improve its enterprise capabilities. The enhancements range the spectrum, security performance, high availability, replication, backup recovery, interaction with other data platforms, monitoring and administration. The vendor also offers a very robust migration tool that helps you migrate Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, and MySQL databases to the EDB Advanced Server. They market their Advanced Server product as having native database compatibility with Oracle, including PL SQL, built-in packages, and DBA tools and utilities. Oracle has SQL Loader. EDB has EDB Loader. Oracle SQL Plus. EDB EDB Plus. I've looked at the syntax of EDB Loader, and it is almost a direct match for Oracle's. It has direct path, parallel loading capabilities, input files, discard files, output log files. If you're an Oracle shop that wants to reduce your database TCO, EDB would allow you to implement an open source alternative without the additional training costs of supporting an entirely new DB product. Of course, there'll be some integration and training costs with any new product, but since it's Oracle compatible, they wouldn't be as significant as they would be with a product that isn't Oracle compatible. The EDB Postgres ARC product is their database platform as a service that enables cloud on-premises EDB Postgres SQL deployments. It provides a set of features and utilities that allow you to provision and administer on-premises systems and cloud deployments on Amazon AWS. It provides a lot of features that facilitate scalability, replication, clustering, load balancing, 
automatic failover and backup and recovery. EDB also provides standard and enterprise subscriptions for 24-7 support. Like most of the other commercialized versions of open source software, EDB combines 24-7 support services and the advanced database features into a single offer. Heroku is a cloud platform as a service that uses containers. Developers can build, deploy, and manage and scale their entire app stack using that pay-as-you-go service. It supports a wide range of development languages and processing architectures. It's a pretty interesting environment that is built on, well, you guessed it, Amazon AWS. Heroku uses Amazon AWS for its compute architecture and Git to facilitate code control and deployments. It's not the intent of this presentation to discuss the application development of Heroku. I'm not an application developer. Uh, this is a DBA presentation, but Heroku does have a PostgreSQL DBPAS offering. Now, here's a really interesting model that uh, I'm starting to uh, have a really an increasing amount of interest in. Uh, this one in ClearDB. Elephant SQL it is leveraging the IAS architectures provided by Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and IBM to enable their PostgreSQL database platform as a service. The vendor provides provisioning tools that allow you to create your PostgreSQL environments on your cloud provider of choice. Once you've deployed your cloud database, the vendor combines the inherent advantages of that cloud environment with its own additional tool sets, utilities, and underlying processing architecture to facilitate ongoing administration and monitoring. And we'll talk a little bit more about this model when I discuss ClearDB. The models are very close. When Amazon Aurora was first released, it was advertised as a MySQL compatible cloud DBPAS offering. Amazon recently announced that Aurora will now be compatible with PostgreSQL. You'll have your choice. Like its competitor, Aurora, Google's Cloud SQL offering was initially offered as a MySQL compatible product. Not to be outdone by um, Amazon, Google also announced that Cloud SQL is going to be PostgreSQL compatible. We have two of the cloud provider heavyweights embracing PostgreSQL as a cloud database data store. Amazon is currently the industry leader in cloud systems by an order of magnitude. We're going to dig into Amazon's architecture a little more deeply when we discuss MySQL. We also know that we can use any vendor's IAS architecture, Microsoft Azure, Oracle, IBM, small providers, to run our database of choice, including PostgreSQL. What we want to focus on in today's presentation is some of the more interesting offerings that also provide 24-7 DBMS software support options. In the lower right green plum, it's an open source data warehouse that gets good reviews. It was originally built upon the PostgreSQL DBMS architecture. The product's been heavily modified for data warehousing and has its own developer community and code base. MySQL has been the perennial open source powerhouse for many years. It's had some of a rocky past with Oracle assumed sponsorship of the product. The open source development community didn't react well to the king of all commercial vendors in assuming control of an open source product. The original developers of MySQL started a new MySQL variant called MariahDB. Although still somewhat nervous about Oracle being the corporate sponsor, it seems that the community is still interested in contributing. We saw the strength of MySQL when we reviewed the DB Engine's rankings. It's a very popular product, continues to have a pure open source community supported edition, and a feature set that continues to grow. PostgreSQL, although growing more rapidly than MySQL, has a lot of catching up to do to become a head to head competitor for MySQL. MySQL should continue to be considered now and in the future as a full featured relational database that can easily compete with its larger commercial counterparts. Besides offering robust 24-7 support for MySQL, Oracle is vigorously adding new features to the commercial versions of the product. Certainly the open source based product has a robust feature set, but Oracle has certainly added value to the base code by adding a vast array of new capabilities and administrative tools. Oracle's enterprise and cluster CGE editions provide a wide range of features that justify MySQL being the second most popular database on DB engines. Cluster CGE edition is very impressive. 
It's geared towards heavy workloads and has features that not only improve the base product clustering of HA capabilities, it also provides advanced tool sets and NoSQL API access. Many of the NoSQL products provide sharding, which allows you to distribute data to different nodes in a multi-node cluster based on a key value or a user-specified tag. But many of the NoSQL offerings don't provide the ability to shard and still retain full join, referential integrity, and asset capabilities. Oracle Cluster's CG edition provides auto sharding capabilities and allows users to benefit from table joins, referential integrity, and full asset transaction support. Although the open source purists may still be concerned about Oracle's corporate sponsorship of the product, it's pretty hard to debate the fact that Oracle's commercial editions make MySQL one of the most competitive database offerings in the market. When you compare feature by feature and database TCO from MySQL to Oracle DB and SQL Server and any other DB product for that matter, MySQL is very competitive and can hold its own in many areas. Two other vendors that I'm impressed with are Percona and ClearDB. Percona has been historically known for its open source ExtraDB cluster product, it provided MySQL based product with clustering capabilities. The vendor also offers the Percona DB server. Percona states that the Percona server is built from the recent versions of the MySQL source code. It's fully compatible with MySQL, but it's been modified in six key areas. Scalability, they state that Percona is easier to scale than standard MySQL. Performance, they state that their product is faster right out of the box than MySQL. Reliability, it's more resilient to corruption and provides crash safe replication. Management, Percona server provides online backup, online table import export, diagnostics. Percona's product, they say, has better profiling and instrumentation and flexibility. It's more tunable and easier to control than standard MySQL. Percona also offers consulting and 24-7 operational support for MySQL, MariaDB, and of course, its own Percona products. In addition, they also support MongoDB. I like their model because Percona offers the Percona database server and all the add-on tools and utilities as true open source. They're free to download and deploy. When you compare them to the other commercial vendors, Percona more closely adheres to the open source model. In addition to clustering, Percona offers Percona monitoring and management, which they describe as a free open source platform for monitoring and managing MySQL, MariaDB, and MongoDB. They offer monitoring plugins and the Percona Administration Toolkit for MongoDB and MySQL. It has over a million downloads. Percona's main source of revenue is from support and consulting services for their products, not product sales. For production environment support, Percona would be a good alternative uh, to Oracle if you want to run a MySQL variant. ClearDB has got the same model as Elephant SQL for PostgreSQL, only much more robust. The vendor allows you to choose your cloud provider of choice. You're able to implement your MySQL database on Amazon, Google, IBM, and Microsoft's cloud IS environments. The vendor then leverages the inherent features provided by that cloud architecture. One of the more interesting capabilities is the enterprise product's ability to provide multi-cloud and hybrid public-private cloud clustering. It adds a processing layer that facilitates replication between the disparate platforms. Their entire focus is providing a MySQL database platform as a, uh, as a service, and you get to choose the target. And it's the same interface, whether you deploy on Amazon, whether you deploy uh, on IBM or Microsoft. You use that same interface, and you can actually replicate between Amazon and, and Microsoft if you'd like. They also offer a 100% uptime guarantee that at least one of your DB master nodes will always be available. Amazon, it's the heavy hitter and currently offers a broad and deep suite of cloud and EMS services. Customers can choose from fully managed products that include Relational, Aurora, NoSQL, DynamoDB, Data Warehouse, Redshift, and in-memory Elasticash. 
Amazon's RDS product suite provides consumers with six managed database engines that include SQL Server, Oracle, MariaDB, MySQL, and PostgreSQL, two commercial and three open source products. On the other end of the management owners spectrum, Amazon's EC2 provides customers with total administrative control over their entire software stack, and that includes their database instances. This wide array of offerings allows shops to choose their cloud DBMS architecture of choice, from single tenant traditional IS models that provide them with a high level of administrative control to multi tenant shared DBPAS environments that turn over ownership of many of the day to day administrative processes to Amazon. Amazon is pulling out all the stops to accelerate the wholesale adoption of their cloud DBNS systems. The vendor provides utilities that help customers migrate their MySQL on-premises environments to cloud-based Aurora systems. In Q4 of 2016, Amazon released the AWS Data Migration Services. It's a very robust replication utility that allows you to initially seed your Amazon Cloud database with data and then keep it in sync with your on-premises system. The replication utility allows you to migrate larger systems to Amazon and also provides shops with the ability to maintain cloud on-premises hybrid architectures. What's really beneficial is that the product provides replication between, of course, homogeneous sources and targets, your Oracle on-premises to Amazon Oracle RDS, for example, but it also allows you to set up replication between heterogeneous platforms, Aurora to, from Oracle to Aurora, SQL Server to MySQL. Amazon also provides the AWS schema conversion tool. Amazon states SCT can automatically convert the source database schema, including views, store procedures, and functions to its Amazon counterpart. The product also allows you to scan application code for embedded SQL statements and convert them to point to the new schema. I love the phrase they use when they describe this conversion utility. They state that SCT optimizes the code by converting your legacy Oracle and SQL Server to Amazon, helping you modernize your applications. The source databases are the traditional vendors, Oracle, SQL Server, Taylor Data, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and the targets are the DBMS products on Amazon RDS. Amazon Aurora is a MySQL compatible cloud-based database management system. You're going to find a few differences in features and functionality when you compare Amazon Aurora to MySQL on-premises. You go out to Amazon's documentation website for Aurora, they're going to tell you what the differences are in their DB migration section. The benefit of Aurora is it leverages the inherent benefits provided by Amazon's very robust cloud architecture. You can replicate uh, to different uh, availability zones for DR, easily add horsepower when needed, take advantage of automated backups, leverage their disk fault tolerance. There's too many architectural advantages to cover in the time we have. In addition to modifying the product to take advantage of its architecture, Amazon has added additional features to improve Aurora's competitiveness. Aurora provides benchmarks that show um, that Aurora provides five times the performance of MySQL. Now, we all know how vendors tightly control those benchmark environments, but Amazon provides you with instructions on how to compare performance in their Amazon Aurora performance benchmarking guides. Google and CenturyLink also offer MySQL DB PAS platforms. Google's Cloud SQL database has been supporting MySQL since its inception. The vendor certainly leverages the inherent benefits of its own cloud architecture to improve upon MySQL's capabilities. But Amazon outclasses Google in features as well as the tool sets to facilitate migrating databases from on-premises to the cloud. MariahDB was created by the original authors of MySQL as a response to Oracle's assuming ownership of that product. When you compare MariahDB to MySQL, the product does provide some additional features that MySQL doesn't. There really isn't time to form a head-to-head -head comparison of the two products. You can find this comparison on the MariahDB website. I have the link in the bottom of the slide. If you search the web, you'll find dozens of comparisons that highlight the pros and cons of both products. MariahDB has a quickly growing number of third-party vendors that offer 24-7 support. 
Since the product is a traditional open source offering and relatively new, well, relatively new when compared to MySQL, which has been around for 20 years, you don't see a lot of third-party vendors providing enterprise, read that commercial, versions of the product that offer additional add-ons. But it does have a vibrant development community that is adding a wide range of features to the base product. One of the add-ons that does ship with MariahDB is, that's very beneficial is Galera which provides master-slave and master-master replication. The product is also open source, but the authors do provide some support services. Let's discuss open source versus commercial products for just a couple of minutes. Each offering has a home in the modern IT infrastructure. As we learned throughout this presentation, open source products provide a robust feature set and numerous 24-7 support options. Customers that want to implement mission-critical apps built on open-source database management systems, they can feel secure knowing their environments are supported by vendors like Oracle, EDB, Percona, Amazon, and Google. The key is to perform your traditional proper due diligence when comparing commercial and open-source products, as well as the various vendors that offer 24-7 support for open-source offerings. RDAX recommends that you perform a traditional vendor evaluation that includes a set of weighted evaluation criteria used to compare the offerings. For example, response times would be a critical comparison metric. If your shop requires five-minute vetted response times for outages, you'll need to factor that into your evaluation criteria and weight it heavily. As I stated, it's important to remember that open source doesn't mean the product is totally free from upfront licensing and or ongoing maintenance costs. Many open source DBMS vendors provide base functionality in their free open source offerings and a higher level of features in versions that have upfront purchase costs or require subscription-based support contracts. The key differentiator is that the upfront licensing and your ongoing maintenance costs are traditionally and sometimes significantly lower than their commercial competitors. There's an increasing number of vendors that are offering multi-cloud DBPS architectures, which I'm a strong proponent of. You point their provisioning tool to your cloud architecture of choice, and you build your DB environment. They then leverage the target IAS architecture to improve the features and functionality of the database product and facilitate ongoing monitoring and administration. Well, you can't go wrong with vendor support when you choose Oracle, Percona, EDB, Amazon, Google. It's kind of like why I just started in this business 30 years ago. I worked for a very large, very stuffy financial organization. The motto at that time and, uh, for those people in the shop were, you wouldn't get fired if you chose IBM. If you're going to choose a smaller provider, you'll need to perform your due diligence during the selection process. In addition, since some of the open source relational products don't have the same market presence as their traditional players, or of course Oracle and Microsoft, as a result, they won't have as many third-party vendor, vendors providing tool sets. In addition, you'll need to be aware of the third-party application support. Does your third-party application provider support MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariahDB as a back-end data store? Commercial vendors and products, they have a much larger customer base. The vendors have robust 24-7 support and maintenance offerings, and the cloud is a significant part of their strategic initiatives. The vendors have huge budgets for R&D and are known to be fierce competitors. You also don't have to worry about mergers or acquisitions as you do with the smaller vendors. You have ready access to skilled DBAs, and there's lots of third-party apps and tools available. Because of their market presence, you'd be hard-pressed to find a third-party app that doesn't include one of them in the list of supported database data stores. But choosing a larger vendor doesn't always mean better support. You're one customer out of tens of thousands. Unless you're the size of General Motors, you probably won't have a lot of sway. Because of their size, you may find that you receive more personalized support from a smaller competitor. The downside for commercial systems is system cost and complexity, as well as restrictive and sometimes predatory licensing practices. If you do web searches for database audits, you'll find a lot of supporting evidence that these large commercial vendors often play hardball with their own customers. There's a host of articles on Oracle using audits to force customers into their cloud architectures. Microsoft doesn't fare much better. When you see the articles are from industry-leading publications like Forbes and CIO, it's hard not to place a high level of credibility in the evidence they provide. Some of them are pretty hair-raising. There's two words that when used together strike fear in any organization, 
Oracle an audit or Microsoft an audit? RDX's recommendation is to add an open source offering into your supported products. If you're using a database service provider like RDX, it should be a no-brainer. There should be no cost associated with DBA training. You are going to incur the cost of training your development teams to interact with the new target database data store. As I stated, I'm a big fan of both PostgreSQL and MySQL, which includes the Bracona, EDB, and My MariahDB variants. In addition, you have a wide range of DBAS cloud offerings that use the open source uh, as a base product. I'm spending a lot of time digging into Enterprise EDB or EDB for short. As I stated previously, it markets its PostgreSQL plus advanced server as a cost-effective alternative to Oracle. The vendor states that the product provides a deep level of compatibility with Oracle features that include 100% drop-in for PLSQL's uh, procedural language, Oracle SQL extensions, functions, packages, and replication. Shops that have a big footprint with Oracle now have an option for an open source database alternative that won't require an extensive amount of training and retooling. Open source products are cost effective, robust, and reliable alternatives to commercial products. Realize that there'll be ramp up times and costs associated with supporting a new database management system, just like there is when you support any new product. You'll need to factor in additional training and changes to your documentation, changes to change management procedures and security policies. How big of a project that is depends on how much documentation you have and how robust your change management procedures are. We've had several customers, especially those that use MySQL, find that the cloud offerings didn't provide 100% drop-in capabilities. Some of them have come to us at the onset of the contracts asking us to find out why some of the features and, or the more SQL, uh, complex SQL language constructs weren't working the same way. Their strategy was to use the cloud for test and QA and on-premises for production. For other customers, it was the other way around. Amazon provides a feature comparison between Aurora and on-premises MySQL. The list is fairly short, but there's still a list that you need to be aware of. If your on-premises application utilizes a feature that isn't provided, you don't want to be blindsided. I'm just using Amazon Aurora as an example. You'll need to perform this analysis on all DBPAS offerings and open source variants. DBPAS and on-premises database differences can be found with any DB product. Take a look at Microsoft SQL Azure versus on-premises SQL Server. Microsoft documentation provides a list of differences between the two products you'll need to be aware of them. Some of the offerings will allow you to just drop your product right into the cloud, while other environments may require you to modify your application and database. This compatibility should be an evaluation metric when you perform your vendor analysis. If you choose to leverage the add-ons provided by the Enterprise Commercial Editions of an open source product, you also need to remember that you may be locking yourself into that particular vendor. The amount of vendor lock-in depends on how many of those add-on features you utilize. This includes the cloud offerings. Each vendor has their own unique way of environment administration and monitoring. It's not only the technical differences that you may need to retrain your staff if you switch providers. This wraps up our open source database presentation. I highly recommend next month's presentation, which focuses on cloud's hidden impact on IT support shops. In September, we're going to be discussing the benefits of using the PCI DSS security framework as the foundation for your security architecture. And here's my email at the upper right. You can also send me an email to join our newsletter. This month's newsletter includes a link to an RDX video demo of Microsoft Power BI articles on SQL Server 2017 new features, Amazon AWS data migration services, and Google Cloud SQL support for PostgreSQL. So, uh, Kelly, do we have any questions? Yes, Chris, we did have a couple questions come in during the presentation. I'll start with this one. What long-term impact will the cloud have on open source and commercial databases? Well, we, we know that Amazon, Microsoft, and Oracle all want to be known as the number one cloud provider. We also know that the core of any application is the database data store. 
I think we'll see an era of hyper competition taking place. I like that word. Hyper competition is going to force vendors to accelerate the unveiling of new architectures, new products, new features, and pricing options. The larger vendors are going to pull out all the stops to entice customers to buy into their cloud architectures, lock, stock, and barrel. But you see these smaller DB vendors being very good at what they do, which is being nimble, leveraging the cloud, and offering features that the larger vendors can't. We know that many shops are now deploying multi-vendor cloud architectures. They're leveraging multiple cloud providers. Think of the model that ClearDB and Elephant SQL utilize. They're able to use their services to build an environment on your cloud architecture of choice. The larger vendors don't want to do that. Some of the vendors provide features that allow you to keep the multi-vendor cloud and cloud on-premises systems in sync. We're going to see other vendors follow that model, and many of them are already doing that. In addition, Pertona and ADB, they both have strong, strong cloud offerings. They're leveraging the inherent benefits of the cloud to improve their products. Hyper-competition is a good thing for the buyer. We're going to have more options, better pricing, and more features available to us than ever before. I don't think we've seen anything yet. Any other questions? Yes. Should all shops consider open source databases, large and small? Being a smaller organization, it would be a challenge to begin supporting a new database platform. Mm, boy. You know, the, the question kind of, you know, this isn't a sales pitch. I'm just going to provide you the facts. If you use a remote services provider like RDX or one of our competitors, we can bring great value. All the leading providers are going to offer services that allow you to easily test the waters. Choose one that supports both open source and commercial. Since most of us larger competitors in this space, we support all the leading commercial and open source products. We can help you integrate a new open source product into your shop. We know the databases you're currently using, know the open source product you want to use, and we can help your shop understand those differences. If you want to convert a commercial database to open source, a service provider like RDX, like I said, I won't give you a sales pitch, but we can leverage our support expertise in both products to facilitate those conversions. We're going to be able to leverage our knowledge in both the source and the target. You don't have to buy it a full-time resource if you're just starting. You know, after the production implementation, you can roll into a partial FTE service contract. You don't need a full-time person. You've only got a few open source databases to support until you grow. And those service hours, they can grow along with your new environment. You know, I, I wish I could recommend maybe on-site consultants um, just to feel like I'm being unbiased. But you can't compare the skills of a consultant to the combined knowledge of teams of both commercial and open source DBAs, right? They know both the source that you're using, they know your targets that you want to go to, right? Those people get together. It really makes for a smooth support environment and, and kind of an easy transition from one database platform to the other. And I don't think there's any other type of offering out there except a remote service provider that has those capabilities that can do both. Any more questions? Yes, we have one more question. What's the greatest challenge when evaluating open source versus commercial products? Complexity. Uh, you know, this, this hyper competition, it's resulting in a, like a, a bewildering array of new architectures, products, product features, and pricing options. The cloud isn't helping. It's adding to that complexity. We're not comparing product features anymore. We're comparing architectures, cloud, on-premises, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, on-premises offerings. The evaluation process becomes you know, much more substantial of an undertaking. These architectures, they also are going to have a significant impact on the way your shop provides support. You know, and that's kind of a good segue into inviting everyone to next month's presentation because we're going to focus on just that the cloud's hidden impact on IT support organizations. Uh, I also have a presentation on comparing cloud architectures. And because you know, the, of the length of that presentation, I couldn't let it exceed an hour, I compared the big three, uh, Amazon, Microsoft Azure, and Oracle Cloud DB. Um, so if you'd like to see that presentation, you can go out to RDX's uh, YouTube channel 
and view that one also. We have a list of all the videos, and there's a lot of RDX Insight Series presentations. So I think that was the last question, right, Kelly? That's correct. Okay. You know, we're, we've timed it perfectly. It looks like 2:56, so that's that's good. You know, I, I appreciate everybody's uh, time today, and you know, I, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, attending the presentation. If you'd you know, like to discuss any of the open source products, you know, I'll put you in touch with our open source teams here. You know, they're certainly glad to talk open source database products with, with anyone, right? You don't have to be a customer. Um, you know, send me an email at cfoot.rdx.com, and we'd you know, certainly be glad to, to talk to you about some of the open source products. Now, I'd like to thank everybody for today's presentation, uh, for attending today's presentation. And um, uh, I'll make sure that everybody's invited to uh, upcoming presentations. So thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Thank you, everyone.